Hi there, everybody. My name is Kate, and welcome to my channel, Trinergy Awakens Naturally. So I want to talk to you about something, but I need to set up some uh, a premise first that we need to be starting on the same uh, page and the same sheet of music um, so that you understand where I'm coming from to begin with. Otherwise, you know, you might be into this and go, what is this woman talking about? So this is really designed for people who work in that 5D or that ascension or higher consciousness consciousness understanding where we tap into energies that we don't see with our physical eyeballs in the 3D that we have clairvoyant skills, um, tel uh, telepathic skills, ways of viewing the world through different um, perceptive measures, you know, that we can feel things, we intuitively understand things, we get pictures or we smell or we taste, um, psychic, uh, all of that mediumship, all of those words, that, that, would, that would be sparking the area that I'm talking from. If that's not your jam, you probably are gonna wanna, you know, hook left, um, which is fine, you know, because I'd rather that someone not be uncomfortable and be turned off from the whole subject entirely um, of getting in touch with their divinity, which is what this is really about. It just so happens that my job here on the planet is as a light worker, as someone who does have some skills and some abilities, one of the things that I've been gifted with is to be able to see visions of things, some prophetic stuff and some retroactive, this is what happened, you know, um, not exactly um, remote viewing it isn't that it's more of just really getting like a a zoom call to say this is we're chatting with you or to watch some sort of a cctv of something historically that's happened and it has never um been related to anyone that i know in my intimate circle when i'm standing there i get downloads about people that i have known however the visions and the prophetic stuff that i'm talking about that has you know whole storylines associated with it is um that's about areas of land that i go visit where i live here in Colorado um, to help to heal some of the atrocities that have happened to the indigenous peoples. Um, quite frankly, that's just my work in doing it that way. However, I do have the ability to intuitively understand or get messages or have visions that um, I just see with my mind's eye uh, about things also. What I do not have, um, not with any regularity and definitely it's not something that I promote within myself to go looking into or try to see someone in a um, clairvoyant space or a psychic space or anything when I'm talking to them or you know thinking about them I do not consciously go because to me that's snooping that's been the download from the get-go um, from my team is that no that's not part of what I do is to get too busy with that um, because that can turn very much into a slippery slope of you know people that have their blinds open and peeping toms take advantage of that kind of thing that I, I don't want to be you know a peeping tom so I just stay out of the whole arena not making a judgment um, not meaning to make a harsh judgment of what other people are doing. It's just I like to keep a very tight boundary of what I'm doing in the 5D or with my energy because that can be very slippery and I do get downloads. Anything that I'm given a download about, I assume that if it's a ding somewhere and somebody goes, you know, or, or I know it to be true, or it's confirmed somehow that I was meant to know that because I don't go seeking any information like that. Um, that's just my personal standard and what was given to me as I started this journey of understanding how we're going to use your energy, Kate, and it's not like that. So um, the deal is, is that I wanted to mention this because there are a lot of people right now that are in a lot of um, very much a, in psychic psychiatric distress as well as psychic distress they're in spiritual crisis which i consider that to be kind of one and the same to our psyche and our psychic um are kind of at at odds and not understanding how to reconcile themselves and i don't mean psychic as in everybody on the planet as a medium you know um like with a clear with a um a a crystal ball or something I mean that we are all mediums of something we're either mediumship to the divinity God Jesus Brahma Allah Mother Mary whomever it is that we subscribe to if we subscribe to something or subscribe to a higher power whatever we call something if we can understand that there is something that's what I'm referring to and that we are channeling that information um, from there from a higher source of information or it'll get blocked in our mind somewhere so we're 
we're constantly obtaining our in information, channeling our information from somewhere. Um, so that's what I mean when I'm talking about channeling. It's just a matter that I really look to not channel from my own mind a whole lot because that little sucker can be broken for a second, you know, especially in those, you know, murkier places where, yeah, that's just broke. You got to get rid of that whole system. How do I do that? <laughs> I call the higher authority on that. Yeah, I'm going to need to talk to my boss about that because that's a mess over there. And so, you know, really that's what I mean is that I look to a higher power that if I'm, you know, really stuck somewhere or if I'm being given information about something, it always has to be for the purpose of using it for higher energy and higher um, healing and higher understanding so that we can move these energy blocks. We have a lot of people in a lot of pain across the planet and in a lot of spiritual crisis and questioning, you know, what's God again and what is this mess? And a lot of people hopping on that, you know, to cause more distress because they don't believe. I mean, it's a real disaster in a lot of different places and a lot of people taking advantage of that position um, on all sides of it. So the reason that this came up is I, I have um, I have a client that I do Reiki with on a regular basis and um, she's a young woman that you know she's just she's a beautiful soul she's absolutely gorgeous but she had a life-threatening illness um, and uh, I, I've met her you know after that quite a ways after that um, but she comes for uh, Reiki healing sessions with me and I don't generally, as I said, when I'm just talking to people in my everyday life, I don't go all psychic and spooky with them. I get a feeling of whether I can, you know, go there with them or not. And sometimes if I'm given something, it's usually something of, uh-uh, and I need to bug out. But I don't, you know, that's not just a, I'm reading someone. You know, that's not how I operate. My brain would explode from all the, you know, no, i got to be a 3D human right now, and I can't really get too involved with that, you know, trying to look into their whole thing, you know, um, unless they smell bad in my energy, you know, or they're they're funking me weird then I can just really like I'm a regular person because I'm a human you know it's let's put a human here for a minute um, but this young woman um, she I, I was seeing things I don't mention whenever I see things or if I see something in a healing session or in some sort of a mentoring session or something like that I don't you know just pop that out there because there's always the possibility no matter what kind of mediumship skills I have or channeling skills or how many dings of confirmation I've gotten that doesn't mean that every single message that I may think I'm receiving is going to be accurate for that person I could be getting a ding that's for me and so I just keep that stuff very much for myself unless I'm putting it out here in the broad context of hey if this is for you you'll know it's for you however to narrow it down and say this is for you and um, that creeps me out because you know I hear a lot of people do it and then you know people that might not have a better footing with themselves 737 might say oh okay and they start finding out how they can jam that shoe on their foot and that sucker's like three sizes too small and it wouldn't be the color you'd wear anyway at all so um, anyway this young woman I was uh, with her probably three or four sessions um, and I, I was getting to know her you know working with her about what the illness was the nature of the illness the treatment process and where she was in that um, and so we always talk for a few minutes beforehand um, and then we talk for a few minutes afterwards so that you know we're gauging the the effectiveness of the Reiki treatment and how I can more specifically work with her um, because I take that into prayer you know that how can I be working with her specifically um, for the next treatment the more knowledge I have of her here and the 3D and what she's experiencing here, you know, I don't have to do that plundering thing, which isn't nearly as effective as just asking, hey, what's your life like? You know, what do you do? What are you experiencing? Are you having pain right now? You know, um, so getting to know a person at that level on the 3D, you know, it can take a little bit of time and people are guarded and their energy can be kind of shielded. And yet she was very open. You know, she's a very open person. She's um, very much into holistic healing and, you know, energetic things um, and spirituality. Um, it's just, it's new to her. There's a lot of new information. And so I don't even be thrown out there that, hey, I had this vision, you know, um, I saw this while I was doing this healing. Cause like I said, that could be for my benefit and it's going to freak her out and ruin any, you know, session we'd have in the future or slow us down, perhaps. And so just keep that to yourself unless you, you know, really get the ding from us, Kate, that, hey, or she says something, just observe that and keep on moving it. You know, you got other work to do. Um, so, you know, I saw some things. I was like, wow, that's really cool. You know, that's, that's neat. And I just like her. She's, she's very young um, and a very sweet young woman. She's been through a whole lot and she has just this very kind soul, you know, very kind and gentle and, you know, seemed kind of befuddled. And, 
she shared with me that um, she had a, a family member that had passed away when she was young, um, a significant parental figure, her father, um, a big deal when she was like 12 or 13, I think, um, that her father had passed away. And I thought, oh, you know, I'm getting chills now that, um, that I had seen originally the first couple of times I worked with her that I started getting these, you know, visions that I had a very strong female presence with her. And so that kind of shocked me. And I was really glad that I hadn't said anything like, hey, there's a whole bunch of chicks in here, you know, um, that and precisely why I don't um, generally say anything that I thought, huh, you know, wow, I said a dad, you know, that he's passed away. Um, and then I started questioning myself, like, well, did I misread that or something? Like, just let it go. You know, don't get all up in that. That's not what you're doing right now. That's a mind thing. And you got to tell that puppy, sit down, you know, and not right now. Um, so get busy with what we're going to do right now that just, you know, let's, let's move on with this. And she had said that that was really bothering her right then there was a, a birthday or something there was some sort of a maybe it was the holidays or something where that was bringing up a hurt for her that she's not that old and not you know decade after decade after decade has not passed since her father um was uh taken from her, you know, through death. And so, um, it, it still felt very raw when she said it and she kind of teared up and, you know, just felt very vulnerable. And so I definitely didn't want to be digging in there that Reiki sessions are not rolfing sessions. This isn't the Hoffman Institute and we're not, you know, I'm not purging that kind of thing because I'm not qualified to do that, you know, so I don't want to be opening up anything in anyone. And that's yet another reason why I'm careful what I say to people, because, you know, I don't know what kind of portal that might open for you. It might be a portal, that, you know, I do I can open and go, what? What's in there? Peekaboo. And yet what jumps out at you because I say that might scare you. And what something that you say <laughs> just casually might scare me. So I just, I'm careful with that, right? No matter what anybody else is doing, it's not a statement. It's just, that's the way I feel about it. And so I just went on with the session and it was so crazy because we were talking, um, the session, meaning the conversation part of it, and she was going on about her dad and I felt inspired to ask her, you know, do you mind if we talk a little bit more about this and we'll shorten the, the session that we're doing and we'll go as long as we can. But I, you know, I know that, that I really would like to know a little bit more about this in conversation. Can we talk a little bit more about this? And she said, yeah, okay. I, I'd really like that. And I said, cool. So I said, tell me about your dad, you know, give me some more information on that, please. And I really heard myself saying that and thought, why am I doing that? You know, why am I asking this? And she's upset, you know, um, it, this is not making sense. And I felt kind of a sense of oh dear um and reassurance for my team that please don't you know tell that monkey to sit down you know sit down little clown you're not part of this routine you're some little mind monkey um some mind virus that go sit down with your you know your vitamin c and get the hell away from me you know we got work to do here and as she started talking about him and really bringing in yeah i just feel that that warmth of oh yeah that um she was talking about how much she loved him and how much she missed him and she so wished she could talk to him i saw a man to my right two of them and they were both incredibly tall and i thought okay this is wild you know this is a new way to experience this because this is just not the way i generally do this it's not how we usually get our jam on but okay you know what are we doing here but i didn't say anything to her i just you know was observing that okay i feel these i kind of sense this i see this um these tall men and one's clearly older than the other they're not brothers but I'm not sure if that's, you know, a father and a son. I'm, I'm not sure because they're both old, you know. I'm not sure about that. And she's talking, so let me pay attention. And, okay, you know, multitasking at its finest, you know. <laughs> Multidimensional multitasking. That was a new one of, like, wow, that's some weird stuff right there. But, okay, um, I'm, game. I'm game for that. I'm down. Let's go. Um, but she talked, and then the women that I had seen before were standing behind her over at the chair that she was sitting in. There was like this whole cluster um, of these women. And the next thing I saw was this white bunny go bounding by. And I'm like, what is this nonsense? I believe that, you know, this is turning into some, some dumb stuff here. Don't come with the dumb. What is this? You know, like my mind was really, really just having a hard time with it. Like what the hell, you know, I can't get distracted with this. This woman's in tears and she's talking about her deceased father and you know, not, uh, you know, this is all brand new to me and this is freaking me out. If it freaks her out, I don't want to do that to her, you know, please make this stop. And suddenly I heard myself, she hit a pause in the thing and suddenly I heard myself 
herself saying, do you have indigenous people in your history that are women? And she confirmed, yes, we do. And I said, okay. I said, and do you have some sort of Celtic, Irish, English, something, you know, um, with the men in your family? And she said, yes, I do. And she explained that, that relationship that, yes, that's true. And I said, and what's the deal with a white rabbit? I mean, this, this, I started to say this shit, this shit was coming out of my mouth. And I'm like, what are you saying? You know, no, you don't, you've got a strict rule about this. What are you doing? You're not in test bedding. This was someone in tears about her dad. What are you doing? And yet, oh my God, it was so amazing because I'm thinking these are all things that I could be just be making this up. You know, I mean, you know, come on. That's the doubt that I have and, and why I don't pop out with things that, you know, with people is that it could be applicable in some dimension that they aren't operating in or it's strictly for me or, you know, anything, any number of things. And so I'm just very careful. Um, but the indigenous women, they were her mother's side of the family and there's a whole slew of them. And the one that I mentioned, the elder of that, I said, oh, that's like a Baba of some side kind. I said, but she's, she's indigenous and I believe it's, you know, mostly like Native American, but Baba is what came to mind. I said, does that, any of that make sense to you? Can you use that information? Cause I'm gonna keep on trucking. You don't have to tell me if it, you know, how it relates. Just, I don't want to be freaking you out. And she looked at me, she goes, no, that totally makes sense, you know? And I said, okay. And I said, let's go back to the gentleman over here. And I said, there's two men. And she said, oh, my dad. And I said, oh my goodness. So your mom's side is behind you and your dad's side's over here. Um, I said, and who, who would be the tall man? I said, they're both tall. And she goes, that would be my grandma or my grandpa and my dad. And she said, they were both quite tall. And she said, my dad was not, you know, a youngster when he passed away, but he wasn't an old, old man. I said, well, I can't really tell. And I'm not seeing him like that. It's just the perception and the, you know, the picture that I'm getting is that it would be someone around my age and his dad you know and she said well yeah that would be about right um and so we talked about that that there was that it's not english and it, it wasn't um it wasn't irish it was you know some some specific uh bloodline that was in the area in the in the ge geographical area but neither one of us could quite print it down you know and yet that's what made sense to me is that i'm not familiar with whatever that lineage is and she wasn't sure you know what specifically so anyway what ended up happening i said well okay i said you know the rabbit thing i said that seems pretty random and she looked at me and she goes that is so wild and i said really i said the rabbit means something and she goes yeah and i don't honestly at the minute i i or at this moment i don't remember how the rabbit related but her eyes were like oh my god and i said i just want you to know that how that all relates to you those are just indications for both of us <laughs> that this way that we view the world and the ability to have that come through without it frightening either me or you, that is the beauty of that ability to grow that and know that and really know that it's here for you to bring comfort. I said, I'm not a, a channeler in that way that I'm going to be giving you, you know, speaking for your father. That's not what I do. I said, the basic message I'm hearing, the overtone is, you know, I'm here with you. And I did hear myself saying that, if I was going to put it into a, you know, a message beyond that, I would say that what I'm feeling or what I think I'm hearing is that please trust that whatever you're seeing is me. And I said, but I'm not quoting that directly. That's not how my gift works traditionally. And it's not what I'm getting right now. And she looked and she said, really? And I said, yeah. I said, so whatever you think you're seeing or experiencing, whatever it is, you're getting the clarification and the confirmation that yes, it is what you're seeing. It is what you think it is. And go with that because that's the way that you are being shown how much you are loved and how much it is very known that you're in pain and that you're having a lot of trouble with the fact that you're struggling, you know, coming out of a devastating illness. You're so young, you've lost people you love. And there's some cake, uh, 
uh, craziness and some chaos in your life and you're missing, you know, a major figure from your life and at a time when you're vulnerable. I said, that's, you know, that's just Kate just wrapping it all up. However, you know, that's the overwhelming message that I'm getting is that you have so much support. And I said, you don't know this because 1919, I didn't want to tell you until now. I said, but may I share with you a couple of things that I saw in the other sessions, you know, a couple of other sessions. And I gave her that information as well about some specific things. And she said, oh my gosh. And I said, you don't need to tell me how that relates. You don't need to pretend that it does if it doesn't. I said, just know that that's letting us both know about that beautiful gift and that beautiful flow of when we open up that channel and we are allowing ourselves to receive the messages from those we want to hear from, you know, um, which is always somebody, you know, I, I don't want a prank phone call. I don't want a nasty phone call, you know, so I put it out there that, hey, spirit team, you know, you're not ever going to come in, you know, cussing, carrying on or, you know, doing something demonic or weird, you know, <laughs> and then cool. And then it's never been anything but that when it's my team, that's not how it works. And so, and I said, whatever you're seeing. And she said, that is so amazing. And she started to cry. And she said, I'm so glad that you said that because I've been seeing birds. I've been seeing cardinals. I think she said that I wondered because he always loved cardinals. I believe that was the tie um, that she made was that she was seeing them and she was thinking so much about him when she saw them. And I said, well, then maybe that's your confirmation. If you're willing to believe that that's the confirmation, then I'm willing to tell you that, yeah, that's what I heard or that's what I perceived. That was the message that I'm feeling to tell you. And if that's marrying up over there, then it seems very logical to take that and run with it. You know, that every one of those signs that it's a way that you can comfort yourself that no, your dad isn't here in his physical body anymore. And he is reaching out to you, hugging you, holding you. And you have so much support that you don't even know because you don't see it the same way that I can see it. It's much easier for me because I'm not, you know, emotionally attached to that the same way in this particular instance. It's not always easy for me to see stuff. I, like I said, I don't go looking for it. However, it was very much explained to me that tell this person that she cannot see it, you know, too well or isn't perceiving it as well because she's emotionally attached to the pain of it. And so the mind gets in the way to, to try to protect those hurt parts. You know, I have an objectivity, so it makes it easier. I have blind spots all over the place. You know, if someone were to read my energy or read something about my history, if they were given permission to do that, they would likely see, you know, a whole lot more stuff, you know, five years ago when I was really, really vulnerable. And even now they would likely see things that I couldn't see because I have an emotional attachment to it and it's more difficult to stay objective when we have that real close emotional attachment but my point is that we have the ability to really grow the skill and that there are people who are gifted. There are a lot of people that have clairvoyant skills. They're seers, they're prophets. They're really doing great work with energy and seeing things, you know, in a very different way that when we're working with that in a very profound way and we're teaching others how to do that and to receive that information in the way that works best for them, um, that if you're seeing cardinals and that's what you think is your dad, then empower that and say, thank you that, you know, even if it's not my dad, I'm going to say thank you because I feel very comforted by that like it was my dad. Say whatever you need to to get that monkey mind, get that little booger flicked off, whatever that little thing is, it'd go, nah, that's just dumb. Because if it brings comfort, then what would be the harm in that? Why would you not want to take that and let some little mind virus that has no investment in it one way or another? It doesn't need comfort. It's just a programming thing. It's just a computer system. It's not the emotion and it's not the energy. It's just the regulator um, between them and uses them with whatever's been programmed into them, which, you know, our predominant understanding of 3D is that we don't see shit that isn't here. That's, that's psychotic. That's weird, you know? And that only certain people, you know, mediums and clairvoyance and most of the world doesn't even buy that either and so it's not a broad held uh, broadly held belief that there are people who are you know doing x-men kind of stuff for realsy out here without being you know psychotic they think they're doing that and yet within our community you know light workers star seeds seers prophets you know chosen people um clairvoyance tarot astrology anybody that's intuitive and using those skills we understand that however the broader 
you know, group of human beings does not yet quite understand that. And this young woman, she's tapped in and she's very, very intuitive and yet was needing just a little bit of guidance on understanding that I can see that and it's validating for you that you've already been seeing that because you just told me that. I didn't have to have any spooky thing happen. You told me that you saw um, cardinals and, and I told you first that, hey, whatever you're seeing, and you said, hey, then take that and go away with it. And be very happy that you're growing your skills. And over the next few weeks, you know, I asked her, sometimes it's a couple of weeks before I see her, you know, she has a, um, we together have had just crazy schedules sometimes with not being able to quite get that worked out. And so it was quite a number of weeks before I saw her the next time. And I said, so, you know, how's the bird inventory going? You know, how's, you know, how's dad? Do you feel dad? You know, how's that going? And she said, it's so amazing because I really have been working with myself that when I see, you know, Cardinal, that I really stop and say thank you. And I said that's really most of the journey about getting that connection going of, hey, you know, I need a Zoom call to dad right quick. Um, I need to have that heart, you know, hug real quick is to get rid of the mind monkey that would tell us that that's just bullshit, that, you know, whatever. And I said, I know that it can sound quite crazy and it can just sound like whatever it needs to. And so selectively choose who you share that with if you care to. I mean, if that's what you need to do, um, it, it would probably, you know, not go over in the, the absolute general public just yet. And that's fine. However, those people that can understand that or those ways that we can talk to ourselves about it we're only talking to ourselves and that little programming thing that would say no nah, that's just that's a mind that's all a mind is not emotion and it's not feelings and it's not energy it is just the programming of what we've been told our world is and what 3d is and you know the finite things and we wouldn't know what 3d is if somebody hadn't told us that if someone didn't say tree ball foot hair, I, if somebody hadn't labeled those things, if they'd labeled this bleh and this, it, it, you know, then we would be calling it that. It's be, the way that we've been told things were. However, those things are shifting and changing. And we've always known about the paranormal and the psychic and things. And they're becoming almost, you know, impossible to ignore at this point that the phenomenon is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and more noticeable and, and more noticeable. And science is joining us with understanding the quantity quantum side of this a whole lot more to get into those, you know, spooky action at a distance stuff that Einstein was talking about and how it's really coming into more understanding on a scientific level. And still our spiritual understanding um, is still outpacing that by far. We've got, you know, understandings in people that outpaces anything that, that um, science can explain to us. However, it doesn't change the fact that everything that seemed like a woo woo weird thing that has been explained by science started it out looking a lot like the doubt you know that we have right here it's just that we're not burning the witches at the stake right at the moment not yet you know let's keep that from happening but you get what I'm saying is that this is just the forerunner to you know having major breakthroughs in the areas of the paranormal or the psychic or the 5d the ascended realms you know however you look at that to be able to see beyond that 3d is changing it's morphing it's changing and you know the matrix yeah we're gonna be bending spoons you know a lot of us are bending spoons very soon i hope you know so the more that we can really help ourselves to invite that experience in by not being too concerned that you know the devil's coming in that door there are ways that we can just set that up by putting the boundary it, it, by saying you know i'm looking for this to be a loving experience with you know loving energy and only loving energy because that's the god presence that i choose to see i don't care what else is out there that's like me going outside and pretending that only nice people exist in the world <laughs> okay well that's not very you know strategic I understand that there's some very unkind people out there however I choose to interact with the nice people and when I come across somebody who is not so nice then I cut that interaction off and you know handle it very swiftly and quickly and don't be messing around you know um, in the affairs of uh, in the affairs of dragons because I, I taste crunchy and good with ketchup when I do so that's the difference is that setting up that boundary and then opening the door you know as much as I possibly can by opening my mind with this is absolutely what's happening you know look for those um, those cardinals and don't be disappointed if you don't see one it doesn't mean that that's not going to come zooming through in another way look for the possibility that life is opening up everywhere for you and that your dad's going to leak out over there and over there and over there and be right here the very minute that we get so good at noticing that frequency and that feel good 
everywhere that we are that we'll be able to really stay in that state of feeling really good about things and notice it in anything you know we're a distance most of us from being that you know easily tapped in however that's how we begin that process and we grow that spiritual muscle so believe that you can see more than you think you can see and good luck to you as you journey if that's what you care to be doing because it really is quite a phenomenal space to be able to look into you know trees or into my mind's eye or you know even be getting downloads and hearing things seeing things and perceiving things that you know if you'd asked me 10 years ago about this i would have looked at you and said uh, okay. You know, <laughs> I'm willing to believe a lot of things. I don't know how that really works. You know what do you mean? Um, it wouldn't have made a whole lot of sense to me. And yet it now makes more sense to me. People that were saying similar things. It's just, they were using different dialogue that did not really tip me in the direction of where I stand now. And so it's a matter of finding the people that are, you know, do they feel good? Do they, does the conversation feel good? Is this, you know, something that's really my, my soul tribe vibe? Is this it, you know, that I'm cool here and really getting comfortable with talking about it in, in the 3D experience with safe people that aren't going to go, oh my God, and get all the mind monkeys um, turfed up into, right, you know, into a war with, oh my God, see, we told you how stupid that is. And, you know, that's, that's, we don't have time for that anymore. We got other things to see the beauty of the earth, you know, as we're, exploding into the 5d let's see all the beauty that we can see because there's plenty of opportunity to see where it's you know not so pleasant however let's deal with you know those people that are really beautiful and see those energies that are you know they're skinless okay you know if they're excuse me if they were a really good energy or they feel like a good energy whether they're wearing skin or not i welcome it in because they have something they can teach me they can have something they they have something they can show me and i have something i can show them which is the honor of thank you very much for being a friend you know thank you for bringing that frequency to me and that's a beautiful exchange that we could just put that off into psychosis however i've dealt with a lot of psychosis and a lot of people that were in psychosis and mental health advocacy and spending a lot of time turf, um, uh, twaddling around in that area myself that I never saw anybody that looked like they were having a good time in that psychosis thing. So I'll, I'll go with this, you know, she's crazy. Okay. It's the happiest I've ever been. And I just would rather that, you know, I'll, I'll take the hit on people thinking I'm crazy than actually being in a crazy state that never made any sense because I wouldn't let myself go there in this direction. So anyway, I hope that 3131, I hope that that's helpful for you in some way. And I hope you enjoy your day, no matter what part of the day you're in and get within your skin because you're divine oh wow it's skinless even though you have an avatar there's so much skinless in there that get in there and start ratting around there's all kinds of things about yourself that you can find out that will help you open up the god door you know open it up this bitch and then open it up more you know we get a taste of that of oh wow that's what's in there we could be busy for afternoon after afternoon after afternoon you know after giggling and doing cartwheels all morning you know Kind of, you know, it, it, it takes some time to get there. I'm not going to blow sunshine up your hiney. You know, we are humans and we have avatars. However, truly being able to look at things from that different perspective of I see things in the 5D and the 5D is a much happier place to be. And it makes it easier to deal with the 3D when the 3D is rocking and rolling weird. So anyway, as I said, get within your skin and enjoy your divine because you're divine. Wow. It's very lovely. It's so, so lovely. Take care of yourselves. And it's fine, by the way. <laughs> Take care of yourselves and I'll see you again next time. Goodbye, my beautiful friends.